The shortest distance between any two points A and B is the straight line joining them. Well, even a young kid who has just studied the basics of geometry would easily tell you that. But what if I told you that it was actually incorrect, especially in the case of air travel and globally speaking? Well, in today's video, I'm going to explain to you why aircraft take a curved path uh, along its route from its departure to destination. So if you are ready, fasten those seatbelts because you're ready for takeoff. fellow viewers and welcome back to the flight tuba flying simplified through youtube my name is elias Ghar and on this channel i talk about aircrafts and how aircrafts operate and also aviation knowledge and some interesting and fun facts just like in this video so if you are new here you might want to consider subscribing imagine yourself to be traveling on a very long haul international flight you have tried to pass your time you've watched a movie you've had your food walked about the aisle used the lavatory even if you didn't want to and you've tried to grab some sleep and up to a point where you have annoyed the passenger sitting right next to you but then the journey doesn't seem to come to an end at all well now you're bored and you decide to check on your flight path for that you switch on your in-flight entertainment system just to be you know looking at your flight path which the captain is taking a very longer and a curved route instead uh, of a shorter route that he could have actually taken and that upset you and now you're thinking does the captain even know his stuff and is that the reason why this journey isn't coming to an end is that the reason why I'm getting bored well let me tell you that actually it's not the case and the captain does know his stuff but it's, it's you you are the one who is getting confused so let me explain Let's say that the international long haul flight that you were sitting on was one from Miami in the United States to New Delhi in India. Well, let's locate these two points on the map. Well, let me zoom in here a little bit and that's why this is the new background for today's video. So let's say that you are traveling from Miami in the United States to New Delhi in India. Well, what would be the shortest route between these two points? Well, you have guessed it right. The shortest distance would be the straight line joining these two points. That would be you will take off from Miami and you will go on an easterly heading, a heading of 090 degrees that is right in, a, in an easterly direction and you'll go straight and reach New Delhi. That would be the shortest distance. Any kid would tell you that, right? using basic geometry. But what if I told you that that was actually incorrect and the shortest distance was not a straight line, it was actually a curved route. Even if you are looking at the flight path, I may be attach, I'll be attaching a, a screenshot of the flight path history of a flight between these two city, cities. You can easily see that the flight path is actually a curved route going from uh, almost touching the North Pole and then reaching India. Why is it so? Well, for explaining and for getting a good insight and overview of what is actually happening, uh, we actually have to jump and look at a globe. So let's do that. All right. So we are we have now got a globe. Uh, just don't mind these uh, reflections of light, obviously. I need to light this up so that you can see. Anyways, so let's look at the route that we have looked on uh, the map. Uh, the route was from Florida in the United States. That's somewhere here. Obviously, Miami is not marked here, but Florida is that extension here. So from United States, we want to travel to India, New Delhi, right? So the route that we were uh, taking and the route that uh, seemed to be shortest on the map was eastwards. So we take off from Miami here in an easterly direction. All right, so we take off in an easterly direction this way, eastwards, eastwards, we keep on traveling eastwards, eastwards, and then we ultimately reach India and New Delhi, right? That was the shortest route that we have seen on the uh, map uh, in the uh, previous uh, frames, right? Now, what if I told you that this is actually not the shortest, but the shortest is something else. But before that, let's uh, use uh, quickly a string. I'm using uh, um, wires here and I'll be attaching the, and joining these two points that is Florida and New Delhi here uh, with that string along this uh, easterly direction line, right? It's almost parallel to this uh, uh, latitude that you can see here. So let's quickly do that. All right, so we now have marked the route. Uh, I just simply used uh, a wire and some cello tape. Obviously, don't judge the uh, uh, work. I'm not so good uh, at doing projects kind of stuff. So here is America and here's Florida. And uh, 
using this route you know you obviously can see it's parallel to a latitude as well we fly eastwards we fly on easterly direction and we reach india that is one route that we talked that we thought to be the shortest one on the map and that's what i have uh, mapped here but then there is something else that i want to show you one other route and let me just quickly map and mark that route as well i'll be using another color uh, wire for uh, you know contrast all right so i have marked another route here using the uh, yellow string this is the green string uh, the green wire that uh, uh, we used to mark the previous route and i have marked another route over the top which is the curved one and the flights actually take this route if you see uh, on um, you know uh, the flight trackers or uh, flight radars the the track the flight path that actually uh, flight take is actually this one the curved one which appears to be longer and this is the other one this which appears to be straight and uh, appears to be shorter right but look at the magic that we do here so if i rotate the globe like that whoa what happened magically uh, somehow this yellow line that appeared to be curved and longer now appears to be straight and shorter and the green one uh, had uh, has now become uh, curved and longer now why this happens is only because uh, of the shape uh, Earth is a three-dimensional spherical shape and a flat map is something else. Although on a flat map, the green route would have been uh, smaller. On Earth, in real life, this yellow line is the shortest uh, distance between any two points. And this yellow line is known as Great Circle. What a Great Circle is, basically imagine a bangle of the same circumference of this, uh, uh, this, this globe. Uh, that bangle is the great circle so anywhere that uh, you fit the bangle that is a great circle and the dist the shortest distance between two points like on a flat map right on a flat map the shortest distance between two points was a straight line joining them but here on a globe the shortest distance between two points is a great circle joining these two points so uh, uh, here in our case miami and india are joined only by one great circle any two points will be joined only by one great circle and that great circle would be this line so imagine there are a bangle over there that would be a cir perfect circumference right going all across and on the other hand this circle right this circle wouldn't be a perfect sphere if you look at that okay uh, correction this wouldn't be a perfect uh, circumference so the shortest distance between any two points is the great circle joining these uh, two lines. Uh, that is the reason uh, on a flat map, although the uh, distances between any two points look to be straight line, on uh, uh, Earth, the great circle is, is passes through the North Pole, somewhere close to the North Pole. And uh, if you put it out, cut it out and put it on a flat map, it actually uh, seems to be curved. Right. And another point to note here is that if there are two points are exactly on meridian and anti-meridian. So what I mean by that here is that, for example, Delhi and there is another location which is exactly on the other part of the globe. So, for example, uh, uh, somewhere here on the west coast of United States. So San Francisco, for example, that's exactly on the opposite, like on this la uh, longitude, exactly on the opposite side. If there are two destinations that are exactly on the opposite side, then the Great Circle would be passing through the pole. So that is why Air India 176 flight, the, uh, the, there was a recent flight, the inauguration flight was done by uh, an all-women crew. That flight passed through the uh, North Pole. So now to prove my point that the uh, yellow uh, route is actually shorter than the green one, in front of you, uh, I'm going to uh, just detach these strings from the globe right so once once again you can look okay both of these strings are attached to miami here and then on the other side they are attached to new delhi in front of you without any cuts or edits i'm gonna remove these strings from the globe and then we are gonna uh we're gonna compare the lengths of these strings so i'm just gonna remove the tape uh sorry about the all the way the autofocus that is across the way all right so here are these two strings and okay let me just quickly compare see for yourselves the green string the one the route that we uh, thought to be shorter one uh, that followed exactly easterly direction is actually longer just by that much but the green route is longer and the yellow one that passes through the great circle is actually the shorter uh, distance between our departure and destination 
So that is the main reason why the shortest distance between uh, point A and point B appears to be curved, while in reality it is not curved with the shortest distance that is obviously a great circle distance between these two points. But when we cut it out from that and put it on a flat map just like this one that we are used to be looking at since our childhoods, then it would appear to be curved. But let me tell you that yeah, this is actually incorrect and the one on the globe or maybe in a three dimensional uh, animation, that is actually the reality and that is actually the correct one. Well, that is not the only reason why aircraft take a curved route. In certain cases, aircrafts have to take a curved route which is in fact uh, longer and even on a globe, it's not a straight route, it's a curved one and that has to do with safety. Imagine yourself that you are in a, a flight that is a transatlantic or a trans-Pacific flight, right? So you are crossing Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean and you are in the middle of an ocean somewhere here and then a malfunction happens or your engine fails or any malfunction that would require you to land as soon as possible to a nearest airport or for example if you suddenly uh, experience fuel leaks right and you are low on fuel and you can't fly for longer distances and now since you are in the middle of an ocean you don't have any airport nearest to you within say 60 minutes of reach all the airport and the nearest one to you is actually three to four hours of flying time away and that is a very dangerous situation because you'll be ending up in sea and you would wish that you would have learned how to swim obviously nobody would want to be in such a situation and that is why ICAO or International Civil Aviation Organization mandates that aircrafts uh, follow something known as EDTO or Extended Divergent Time Operations. Well, what that is, I'll be making a separate video dedicated to that. But just basic uh, uh, insight into what EDTO is, is basically according to that tool, if an aircraft has to do a transatlantic or a trans-Pacific flight, for example, then say from it has to travel from somewhere in France to United States, it just can't simply take the shortest route uh, over the ocean, but instead it will have to travel uh, from near the landmass that is it can't go uh, away the from the landmass and it needs to be within say 60 minutes of flying time distance from nearest airport at all the time throughout its flight that's why it can't go directly it has to take a uh, route that uh, keeps the aircraft closer to uh, an airport and landmass uh, within 60 minutes for example so basically those are the two main reasons why aircrafts take a curved route instead of a straight one the first is obviously it's still a straight one but it seems to us to be curved because it's on a flat map rather than a spherical surface which is what an earth is and the other reason is safety and aircraft can't just pull over like cars and you know uh, attend to the malfunction and they have to keep flying and that's the reason they can't get away from landmass and these are the two reasons well similar to the demonstration that i gave you there are some other routes that i'll i can tell you and you can try for yourselves if you have a globe at home and obviously a small string uh, for example from uh, san francisco to tokyo narita airport it's an 11 hour long flight and if you were to demonstrate like how i did on the globe uh, you would see that the same things happen another is from paris to washington dc or from cape town to sydney especially cape town to sydney is uh, Cape Town and Sydney both lie almost on similar latitudes. So you might think that, okay, one latitude and you can just simply uh, go uh, eastwards. But on the other hand, no, it uh, takes a longer curved route. I mean, appears to be longer curved route through the South Pole. And obviously the iconic Air India 176 flight, which was recently uh, flown. The first inaugural flight was flown by an, an all women crew. I'm sure you might have uh, seen the news. If you haven't, I'll link that uh, news article down in the description. That flight took off from San Francisco and it was a direct flight to Bangalore. Now in these cases, like I told, uh, since the uh, airports are almost on the other uh, part of the earth and almost on the same meridian, that is, uh, if Bangalore is here exactly on its anti-meridian on the other side is where uh, you'll be finding San Francisco these flights uh, fly over the exact North Pole and another example is a flight from United States to Kazakhstan is also a curved line that passes through the North Pole well, the question of the day is did you know this fact and irrespective of you knew or not comment below uh, any route that you know of that passes exactly through the North Pole well that's it for this video guys I hope that this was a very informative and some new information especially for a lot of you uh, enthusiasts who are new to aviation and if you got value and information out of this video make sure to smash that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel share this video with as many friends as possible i'll be coming up with a very good and interesting video very soon until then take care and happy landings